Let's see what's going on at Arts of the Capitol Theater, the ACT Magnet School. I am pleased to be joined by the principal, Sarah Mallory, who's got some big things coming up, including the 2024 Student Dance Company Showcase, A Thin Veil. Sarah, welcome back. Thanks for joining me today. And by the way, what's your storm update for Arts of the Capitol Theater today? Uh, we are running a two-hour delay schedule today, so uh, roads are still pretty slick, and we're uh, looking out for some black ice out there. So two-hour delay today, 10.30 opening. Yeah, we planned on having you and four students in the studio talking about your big event coming up, but right now it's you, but you can talk about the 2024 Student Dance Company Showcase, A Thin Veil. What will be on stage at ACT? So this is uh, one of our um, student Choreo- uh, student choreography, student directed, student lighting designer. So it's all student run. Um, so there'll be several several different pieces uh, that have been choreographed by our juniors and senior dance majors at ACT. There's also non-dance majors who have been invited to um, join in and take part of the, in the choreography. So it's a really collaborative project and uh, really student oriented, which is really exciting. And this will be coming up on Friday and Saturday. Is this like a like a big term paper or something that is like the thing you focus on over the course of the entire academic year? Yeah. So this uh, student dance company is a course at ACT. So the students enrolled in that course learn how to uh, go through the whole process of producing a uh, dance show. So they're responsible for fundraising, um, purchasing costumes. Uh, working with the lighting designers to collaborate on the design, putting out marketing materials. Um, so even like the press release that went out was student written. Um, so they learned that whole process. And then their summative assessment is a reflection based on that the production process. And I'm reading from that press release right now, and it says, A thin veil explores the supernatural and all things not of this world in a concert dance fully choreographed and designed by ACT students. So it sounds to me, Sarah, as if they also also picked this theme for the production. Yeah, exactly. They get uh, together and brainstorm different themes and and topics that they want to communicate out, um, and then they come to consensus as a group as to what the theme should be each year. All right, tell me some of the key players in this production, both on stage and maybe off stage, too. So uh, Tiana Mancuso is our dance director, so she oversees the process. And then our three seniors who are going to join me today, um, Layla Edmondson, Layla Hellebrand, and Aya Butler, uh, really are the leaders behind uh, um, the production and and kind of make sure all the details and logistics happen. They design the schedule. Um, Also, Maddie Raymond from Thompson um, is one of the seniors as well. I almost forgot about Maddie. I didn't want to do that. Um, So uh, they all work together and make sure that the the rehearsal schedule is set. The students know where they need to be at different times. The costumes have been ordered. All those logistics that are really essential to the process. The four seniors have um, really been the leaders in that. Sarah, you said that this is a totally student-run production, which certainly does intrigue me. But I'm wondering that as they're rehearsing this, as they're writing this, as they're putting this together, what kind of input does the faculty give? Is there a point where they say, you know, this might work better if you do it this way than that way? Or is this basically giving the students free reign to do what they feel they want to do? So as uh, the dance director, Tiana really provides that feedback. So there's been um, different showings up to, um, you know, the, the, this week, really. They've been respons- the students have been responsible for showing where they're at in their choreography. And if any um, feedback needs to be made, the students also give peer feedback and do self-reflection along the way to make sure it's a really uh, polished product that we see on stage this weekend, Friday and Saturday. Inquiring minds want to know, Sarah, have you seen the production already? I've seen bits and pieces. I always see bits and pieces. And then, you know, this week, as they uh, get into tech rehearsals, we'll be able to see the a more polished product for sure. All right, let me read from the release here. From fiery Aries to sensitive Pisces, exploring the enigmatic world of zodiac signs by Caitlin Kersenick and Michaela Laflamme blends the unique movements and emotions of every zodiac sign in a mesmerizing opening group dance that symbolizes the harmony of the diverse cosmic energies. Does that say it all? You want to add anything to that, Sarah? (laughs) 
that says it all. I think, you know, the, the topics that the students have cho- chosen um, are really unique and speaks to each of the choreographers individual individually um, in terms of what they want to communicate out. So, yeah, that one's unique. Uh, the, the zodiac signs is something that I've definitely always been curious about. So I'm really excited to see that one on stage. Coming back from the stars to the ground with Escapism by Layla Edmiston, we see an altered reality where a girl escapes the reality of poverty and family issues into a dream that reveals her subconscious. Thoughts on that? I mean, I I, I think it, it's a, a mystery right there. That that one will be exciting to see. Like I said, I've seen bits and pieces of, of it. So the the um, I'm really excited to see the polished product for all of the different uh, uh, pieces this week. And visiting the other side is Interlinked, choreographed by Julie Margaloni, Morgan Lamonte, and Tatiana Winston following tied souls in the afterlife that always find their way back together no matter how long it takes. And Heal in Hell by Aya Butler follows a girl's journey to release her inner demons, not by fighting them, but by outgrowing them. Another fraught journey is shown in Mind Invasion by Naja Wells and Audrey Hauk, with demonic entities that take over in sleep. And the power of the otherworldly is explored by C in What Lies Below by Madison Raymond, inspired by Greek mythology sirens who would lure sailors with their beautiful songs. All this part of the program called A Thin Veil, coming up this Friday and Saturday, 7 o'clock each night at Arts at the Capitol Theater on Main Street in Willimantic as uh, tell me about tickets, how people get them, and what they cost. Yeah, so tickets can be purchased at the door. Uh, Five dollars for East Con employees, ACT students, ACT staff. Ten dollars for students uh, that are not ACT students, and then fifteen dollars for adults. Um, Ten dollars also for seniors if you have a senior or veteran discount. Also, and this production features student artists from Columbia, Coventry, Groton, Lebanon, New London, Norwich, Plainfield, Sprague, Sterling, Thompson, Vernon, Willimantic, and Willington. That's quite a range of towns. Sarah, what would be the farthest town that someone has sent a student to Arts of the Capitol Theater in? Do you get them like coming in from Western Connecticut? That seems almost too far, but how far away did they come? Yeah, right now I think we have our furthest is out in Newington. Um, last year we had a student out in Southington and then we have all the way down to New London and all the way up to Thompson. So we have over 40 towns that, uh, we have students from. Um, so it's definitely a broad range. That's pretty impressive. How many arts magnet high schools are there in Connecticut? You know, that's a great question. I know of, uh, four or five off the top of my head, but I don't want to misspeak. So I believe there's, there's a, a, you know, most of the cities have one. So Hartford definitely has one, New Haven, New London, and then out in the other uh, side of the state, I know uh, Waterbury has one and then Stanford. Um, But there, there may be more that I'm not positive about, but we are definitely unique to Northeast, the Northeast corner. Um, and as you know, you know, the arts are, are really hard to access out here for a lot of students. So ACT is a home for the arts for a lot of students in Northeast Connecticut. But as we know, we've got the best one here. ACT is still accepting applications for the 2024-2025 school year through the end of January. That would be starting next fall. Tell people what that registration and application process is. Yeah, so if you are interested in having your student join us at ACT, uh, the application can be found on our website, www.eastcon.org slash ACT. Um, You can download the application, fill it out, get that into us. If you want to schedule a shadow day where your student comes and hangs out at ACT for the day to see the different classes, see what we're all about, um, that's an option. I also do family tours with uh, families and students. Um, that I can arrange if you're interested in that as well. And you can uh, schedule those by calling the main office, our ACT main number. Sarah, as part of the academic curriculum at ACT, does it include, or do you just tie it in maybe extracurricular, about the history of that building? How there was vaudeville shows, the one I'm back there. I've seen movies there back in the old days. It's got some incredible history at it. So you're not only teaching kids now for the future, but you're teaching them on a stage in a building where this stuff has gone on for nearly 100 years. 
Yeah, it's been really amazing. Uh, the past couple of years, we've really focused on the history of the building. Um, our freshman academy class, so all ninth graders are um, participating in the freshman academy. And the first project that they do is exploring the community that our building is in and researching the history of the town itself. And the students have really found some unique uh, features about our building and why the Capitol Theater was built where it is. Um, you know, along the railroad tracks, and we found some really cool images of, um, you know, people coming in off trains up to Main Street and then into our theater, um, and then there were the hotels right on Main Street where they would stay for the weekend to see the productions, and, you know, it was a really uh, happening spot back in the day, so, yes, yeah, so we've really worked hard to incorporate the history of our theater, the different uh, performers that have been there, and, um Really, it's been cool um, seeing some photos recently on Facebook of the theater um, back in the day. So there's been a couple of different people that have found images that our school has been able to follow, which is really neat. I love that stuff. ACT is a performing arts magnet high school that's free and accessible to creative students from all across the state. Students can select from seven pathways. Sarah, tell me about those pathways. Yeah, so uh, students can pick acting. So if you want to be on the stage, you know, performing in the center of it, that's where you want to be. Um, we have a creative writing. So that's more, um, you know, writing fiction, uh, short stories, poetry, learning all the different genres of writing and then publishing and performing your work. We have our dance department that we've been talking about a lot this morning. Um, so ballet, modern, jazz, choreography, com composition classes, um, we have our media arts pathway, so that's digital art. So if you're into creating film, animation, um, you know, music, digital music, that's the pathway for you. You have a music pathway, um, so that focuses on music theory, music composition, music history, and mostly vocal um, choral performance. Uh, we have our technical theater department, which is all the things behind the scenes, set design, set construction, costume design, lighting, all of that good stuff. And we have our integrated arts and management pathway, which is one of our newer pathways um, that focuses on the production side of the arts, uh, the creative process, and what it takes to curate and create um, any artistic process. So it kind of takes a little bit of all the different pathways and combines it into one. And they do a lot uh, um, in terms of like the, the theory and um, research behind creativity in the creative process itself. Sarah, I'm big into high school and college students keeping their options open. You might go to school and be exposed to something you hadn't thought about, and maybe you wind up going that direction. Do you have people who go in those seven pathways at Arts of the Capitol Theater? And maybe they come into the school wanting to do one of them, and they get exposed to another one, and they end up coming out totally a different direction they came in. Yeah, absolutely. Our students, um, as you said, can take, we encourage them to take classes in all the different arts pathways. So there's a process for them to change their major pathway if they decide that that's the best fit for them. And we definitely want, um, you know, our students to, to make the most of their time at ACT because we have so many different resources and options available. So yes, that's definitely an option if they come to us as a dancer and, you know, want to ch change their major to technical theater that that's encouraged and it does happen through a process where they meet with the different um, advisors for the pathways. They meet with me and we make sure it's the right decision for the student. Tell me what a shadow day is and how that works. Yeah, shadow day is when the uh, student will come to act for the day instead of their the, the school that they're in now. Um, so they are paired with a student um, that has an interest in the classes that they want to see. Um, so they can see a variety of different classes. They attend classes. They see what we're all about at ACT. They eat lunch with the students. They kind of see the different community events that are going on during the day. Um, so they attend a full day of school at ACT instead of their typical school for the day. Um, and then that typically helps students, you know, decide whether they think ACT would be a great fit for them. Is one of the things about a thin veil, it'll be on this Friday and Saturday at Arts of the Capitol Theater, a good example of a collaboration and diversity that you've talked about? Absolutely. That You know, you listed the different towns that are involved. So that's, that just shows you that students are working with students from all over the state, right? It's 
um, it's different than a lot of the, the high schools around here in which the students have been together through their whole school career. So it's a great chance to meet new friends, make new connections, and collaborate with people with a lot of different diverse perspectives. Um, and then within the production itself, you know, all of the different pathways that you mentioned have been involved in some way, shape, or form in this production. Um, so the integrated arts and management students, you know, are writing the press releases and helping with the marketing materials for it in collaboration with the student directors, the lighting designers, and technical theater students have helped with costumes, lighting, making sure the stage is set. Um, you know, Media Arts is helping edit the music and make sure that the playlists are all set and ready to go. Um, so, yeah, it's, uh, you know, any of our productions, but especially this one, is a great example of collaboration across all areas of our school. East Con's Arts of the Capitol Theater presents A Thin Veil, the 2024 Student Dance Company Showcase, coming up this Friday and Saturday at 7 p.m. And you can get tickets by calling 860 465 Five six three six, or to get more information as well, as they're fifteen dollars for adults, ten dollars for children, seniors, members of the military, and five dollars for ACT students and EastCon employees. And you can go to eastcon.org/act to learn more about ACT. Sign up for the aforementioned Shadow Day and to fill out an application. They are still accepting applications for the 2024-2025 school year. Sarah, sounds like a great program coming up this Friday and Saturday. Hope a lot of people go and see it, and thank you for joining me this morning. Thank you so much. It was great to talk to you. Sarah Mallory, the principal of Arts of the Capitol Theater, on 14 WILI Willimantic and 95.3 FM.